Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about the Caribbean is ready to explode with Tropical Storm Elsa forming soon with Jamaica impacts and a potential US threat down the road. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. We got a lot of information to talk about this morning, guys as we've got a formidable storm trying to brew in the Caribbean. If you were with me yesterday, uh, we had Invest 95L, but the concerning part was a tropical wave back behind that, which was labeled Invest 97. And this thing has rapidly and uh, intensified and already has an 80% chance of forming into a tropical storm as 95L will quickly start to fade away because it only has a 10% chance of forming now. But yeah, this area, of, this broad area of low pressure down here is associated with the tropical wave that is moving across, is moving west, northwestward. It's going into a favorable environment as this continues lifting off and it looks to become a tropical depression uh, fairly soon. And it's moving at 20 miles an hour uh, and you can definitely see the trajectory and it puts Jamaica in its sight for a potential landfall in the next couple days. So let me go over some of the details. And this is just the latest information. I've been waiting for this to update. Here's the latest uh, satellite picture. You can definitely see out here in the, in the, in the U.S. That's that stalled front that's going to be slowly pushing southward. Here is actually Hurricane Enrique, which is now a tropical storm, and it has in fact made landfall in uh, Cabo San Lucas with some 40 mile per hour winds, and that moisture will continue uh, lifting further off into the west northwest and actually spread a little bit of precipitation into uh, Arizona. But down here, here's the area of interest we're concerned about. This is 95L. This is the area of low pressure down here by the Lesser Antilles that will quickly fade away with some wind shear. But man, check this out. This is the tropical wave down here. And this has been really starting to develop just almost like every hour. It's got perfect breath up, up ahead of it. It's got the Bermuda High. We'll shift it off into further off into the Caribbean and eventually possibly getting it to make possibly impacts into uh, the United States sometime next week. So as we continue through the maps, let's take a look at some of the guidance of like all the models, not just one. This would be all the models of Invest 97. This has a trajectory, pretty much a congealed, con uh, you know, pretty much guidance as this continues moving across into the Lesser Antilles here and then going over in and around near the island of Jamaica and uh, Cuba. And this could potentially possibly go into uh, the Gulf of Mexico sometime next week. You can see some of the time frames here. This would, you know, this is at 70, 72 hours. This is 96 hours. This is 120 hours. So that would be like more or less four or five days from now. And then possibly reaching the Gulf of Mexico about a week away. So sometime, sometime next Wednesday, into uh, the Gulf of Mexico and look at some look at the track that this is uh, producing. This actually kind of reminds me of Hurricane Dennis, if you recall back in 2005. And just because, you know, we're talking late June, early July, don't let your guard down. These things can't rapidly intensify because Hurricane Dennis did that just in fact, and it's forming in a lot of the same areas that looks like Invest 97 is gonna be forming into Elsa. And back then it, it actually became a storm in July the 4th, and it rapidly intensified as it continued moving off at the west northwest. And once it got into the island of Jamaica, it became a formidable hurricane, if not a cat for hurricane just north of the island. And that continued moving across the westward and northwestward. And then it, it definitely died down with land interaction, but it re-intensified in that area into the Gulf of Mexico where they normally have what they call a loop eddy. Now, if you recall that, you know, Michael hit this loop eddy. So that is definitely a concern down the line. We've got a lot of time to track this, but yeah, this, this is, looks like it's taken possibly a similar track that Hurricane Dennis did back in 2005. So let's say another concerning factor is, is the, the intensity models. Now this is just, this is the latest update 
uh, from the National Hurricane Center with Invest 95L. And check this out. Uh, this is all the models again, having it pretty much by even tomorrow morning, having this forming into Tropical Storm Elsa. This would be Thursday now. And a lot of the guidance has this quickly intensifying, possibly into a hurricane, if not just 48 hours from now. Some of the models and then some of the most bullish guidance actually actually has this going into a category two hurricane. And look at the time frame. We're only talking three to four days from now. So this is definitely something uh, that we have to be concerned about and keep uh, keep an eye on as uh, as the conditions look to become a little bit more favorable for uh, tropical storm development. Here's the shear that we're talking about. And this is kind of a decreasing shear over the last 24 hours. This is the area of interest right now. It's it's actually got a little bit of shear to work with currently, but it's going into a lot more favorable environment where there's just a lot less shear in and around the Lesser Antilles. That will continue lifting off into the West Northwest. And a lot of the guidance has this pushing in and around the island of Jamaica, has some shear out ahead of it. But once it gets past that, look at the open area of shear that is not as favorable for this area. So that is definitely the area of concern where a lot of the model guidance has this putting into a, a, lo a location that's a little bit more favorable with a lot less shear that's gonna be having to contend with. So that is another factor that I'm looking at. Uh, and, and even the water temperatures, it's got plenty of breath, plenty of, plenty of warm water to deal with. It's going into an area in and around Jamaica this would be possibly north of the island in around just a direct hit on the island at this to continue moving across into the care uh, the cayman islands pushing across cuba and potentially uh getting into the gulf of mexico uh sometime early to middle of next week and if we take a look at the 500 millibar this is probably the most concerning to me because this is what you look like you know up ahead of it and what's got to work with we've got that ridge of high pressure that's been dominating over the Pacific Northwest that will continue shifting off into the east and by Friday the July the 2nd it's got this uh, in, into more in, into Canada with a lot of breath underneath it and this is the what they call the ridge over troubled waters this causes divergence underneath so we're talking a Bermuda high that will shift it off into the Caribbean potentially in the Gulf we've got a lot less year we got a lot of warm waters to contend with and we got perfect outflow with divergence up ahead of this. So this is definitely very concerning for a formidable storm to potentially forming and going into the Caribbean and potentially into the Gulf. So this is, we've got a lot to talk about and a lot to be prepared for. This is one of those situations you want to be always over prepared in those situations rather than under prepared. And then this is also concerning because uh, this is the latest guidance from the hurricane models and i was waiting for this to update is this particular model the hwrf uh, has proven itself over the last several years have called many storms not just on placement but intensity pretty far out so this is the latest guidance on the hwrf this is a hurricane model so even by tomorrow morning this is be thursday july the first we're talking this could already potentially be a tropical storm with some 50, 50 mile per hour winds associated with this as this continues lifting off into the west northwest if we look at the guidance on friday this has it continuing to intensify this particular model latest model has it actually going into a hurricane by then we're talking friday now this would be the lesser antilles uh potentially going into possibly a strong tropical storm or even a hurricane by then now again this is one of the bull more bullish models but the reason why i'm showing this because it it, it in it's uh, proven itself over the last several years to be pretty much spot on with its intensity. Now, again, we haven't you know, had a chance to prove it itself this year, but man, a lot of the guidance with the intensity models and everything and the perfect outflow that it has to contend with, this gives me you know, credibility to say, hey, say this could potentially happen. So that, like I mentioned, it's definitely always to be overprepared in these situations to be underprepared as we could be looking at a formidable storm approaching the lesser Antilles by the time we get into Friday as a possible hurricane. Uh, by then, this will continue shifting off. It actually look for what looks to be possibly an eye uh, storm uh, by then 
down to a 980 millibar up to potentially 85 mile per hour 90 mile per hour winds these are not so the winds are a little higher as this continues moving across and then by sunday morning yeah we could be looking at in and around the island of jamaica as a possible hurricane with a 976 mile millibar hurricane uh, to be able to contend with as we go through the day on a Sunday. So if you live in Jamaica, you definitely have to be on the lookout for this storm to possibly rapidly intensify and be an impacting uh, the island of Jamaica by the time we get into Sunday. Now this is Wednesday, so you've got four days to prepare for this potential impact on the island because you're a little bit more susceptible for land landslides and uh mudslides in this situation with some very heavy rain some winds pounding the island as this continues moving across and if we take a look at the overall uh, gfs guidance again a lot of the guidance has this pushing pretty much in and around the island of jamaica by the time we get into sunday with some very heavy rain here's your cold front out ahead of this so like I mentioned, this is gonna be a kind of a one-two punch with some very heavy rain along the coast because this is gonna stall cold front. And then we have an, that system that's coming out of, the, out of the Caribbean with a lot more heavy rain. So this is definitely concerning with a compounding impact from uh, for the US as this continues uh, you know, getting closer to fruition. So if we extend the guidance going into, you know, say seven days from now by early next week, the latest uh, GFS model has this continue pushing off into the Gulf of Mexico, not just this one model, but I showed you a lot of the other models are kind of applying the same thing. And if it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, it's definitely concerning that it could be in and around that loop eddy again. So we have to be looking at looking at for potentially more intensification too. Uh, down the road so th th we have a lot to be concerned about with the, this particular system so uh, i appreciate you guys uh, watching uh, do like this video <laughs> definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the storm